Finding the time and energy to learn something new can be incredibly challenging, but it could unlock these hidden benefits. Welcome to Career Ending Opportunities, where each week we look for ways to change career and find personal and financial fulfillment in everything we do. If you're new here, consider subscribing. And if you are subscribed, thank you so much. Consider the notification bell uh, if that's a thing you do. This week, I want to talk to you about the hidden benefits of learning something new and challenging yourself to learn a new skill. Because not only do you get the gift of knowledge, but you also unlock these three hidden bonuses. Now, if you're like me, you haven't been in full-time education for a long time. And if you've been in the same career for a while, you may find that you do most things on autopilot. Now, either having been out of school for a long time or being on autopilot in your career can lead you to go a little bit soft in working in the abstract and analytical problem solving. So one of the greatest bonuses I found from studying something new and challenging myself to learn a new skill is increased problem solving across all areas of my life. Now, when it comes to programming, there are three stages. You have the planning stage where you've identified a problem in the market and you're looking to solve it. You then have the code writing stage where you are solving problems, but creating problems at the same time, which leads to the third stage. It's the debugging moment where you've written some code and created a lot of problems for you now to fix. 99% of programming really is problem solving. So as I learned more and learned new areas of code, I found my ability to problem solve just kept growing. And it's not just limited to development work. Focusing on a new skill and learning something new really forces you to exercise gray matter that may have been coasting and running at idle for a while. And by facing each hurdle that you get when you learn a new skill, you become more adept at problem solving in wider areas of your life. Number two is the emergence of time in the day that you really didn't know was there. Have you ever been sat and thought, I'd love to work out more, I'd love to learn a new language, I'd love to start a new project, but I simply don't have time? Well, I'm 99% sure that if you're watching this video, you have time to be working on a project of your own and starting something new. But it's not always easy to see where you are losing time in the day. And this whole idea sort of follows Parkinson's law, and uh, Parkinson's law posits that a task will expand into the time that you allotted. I recently did a video on productivity and I'll, I'll link to it up here and it talks about the importance and usefulness of calendar blocking. I use calendar blocking to ensure that any task that I'm doing stays within its allotted time and ensuring that I don't let one task drift and take up the whole day. But by committing to a course or a tutorial series etc you force yourself to free up a small portion of the day. And that's a great starting point. You've, you've instantly generated that amount of time that before you were telling yourself you didn't have time to do anything. And once you become hooked on the course, once you start seeing benefits and you start learning and, and actually having something tangible, once you get past that beginner stage, you'll start to look at where your time is slipping through the day and perhaps realize that all those hours that you've spent last year scrolling through the Netflix catalog is wasted time. Once you find something that you're passionate about, you'll happily give up areas of your life that were previously just time sinks, unimportant wastes of time. And as a result, you'll discover time that never existed before. What this suddenly does is it enables you to take your busy schedule and actually look and say, am I working smart or am I just working? You know, much like a nine to five job that very much is an attendance exercise for some people, they could do all their work by 10.30, but have to stay till five. What are you doing with your day? Are you making the most of it? Are you getting the most out and striving for these goals of changing career? You have to make the effort. I'm trying to get up at 5 a.m. every day, uh, at least while I'm at home in New York, to give myself an extra two hours before the family wakes up. And before that was time where I was just sleeping. It was dead time. Now it's not. You make these sacrifices when you're trying to make a big change and cutting out the unimportant areas of your day really does give you time to work on whatever your goal is. And I wanted to end with my favorite, which is the self-esteem boost you get from filling in gaps in your knowledge and developing useful skills that can help you grow as a person and grow as a professional going forward. Now, as a pilot, once you are rated on an aircraft and you have a couple of thousand hours on it, the learning curve really does plateau. Sure, you might see things from day to day that you're like, oh, I haven't seen that before, but you don't have that learning curve anymore. Another example is Airbus aircraft are so computer driven that occasionally you are left surprised by the decisions that it's made, which uh, stupid pilot joke, it leads you to two types of Airbus pilots. There's the newbie who says, oh, what's it doing now? And then you have the veteran that says, ah, yeah, it does that. I don't know why, but it does that. And unless you're on the cutting edge of an industry, I think that learning curve and that, that learning curve plateau 
is fairly standard. You get to a point where you're comfortable and as humans we tend to be quite lazy. Why push yourself any harder if you're comfortable with where you are and you can do the job and get paid without having to stretch yourself. So by setting yourself the challenge of learning something new, spending the time and energy it takes to achieve progress, you'll start seeing results. And when you do, you get a huge self-esteem boost because suddenly you have skills that you didn't have before. You are potentially able to get work in areas that you weren't before. And hopefully that area is something that you are inspired by and driven into. But that doesn't compare with the first time you actually take those skills and convert them into a product or a project because that feels fantastic. Hitting launch on my first app, I had a huge rush of adrenaline. Now it wasn't a big app, it didn't make billions of dollars. I actually think it was free and it wasn't ad supported. It was just so that I had made something that was useful to me and my friends and family and I released it. And that felt great. It was a huge adrenaline rush of actually going from only being trained to fly the aircraft to something completely different that I was actually achieving something in. So the self-esteem boost is fantastic and it really helps, especially if you are sort of stagnating in the career that you're in, when you start to see success and you start to realize that there is more to you than that career that you are currently defining yourself by or being defined by, it, it just feels good. I encourage you to try it. So that's really the three big hidden bonuses that I got when I started studying something new. If you're looking to do the same and looking to learn something, I would suggest looking at Udemy because their courses are incredibly cheap and most of their instructors are really good. Now, I don't think I have an affiliate agreement with Udemy, so just go to udemy.com, check it out, lots of great courses, and try something new and really just start challenging yourself. And if you have already started learning something and you found benefits that you weren't expecting, let me know. I'd love to hear what tangible and non-tangible benefits you have found by studying and really working on something completely new. That's it for this week. Thank you as always for stopping by. And if you're not subscribed and you've reached this point in the video, please consider doing so. If you are subscribed, there's always the notification bell to hit and a thumbs up for the video would be great as well. That's all the homework that I'm giving you. I'll be back next week trying to inspire you to change career and find personal and financial freedom in everything that you're gonna do in 2019 and beyond. See you next week, bye-bye.